Jesse could sing the Howard songs. And uh, when we tr had the audition, um, that was one of the main focuses. And he started off, I think he did his first five or six songs were all Howard songs, and they were sounding great. suddenly not uh, some sort of job they were doing, but just like a great time with our friends hanging out. 
and uh, that that right there put the exclamation point on we need to get this guy back in the band. Well, I'm sure it's pretty weird for Jesse to sing Howard songs. You know, it's um at that that kind of in that kind of situation, I guess it's uh you know almost like a a, a version of a karaoke band or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's got to be strange. Like it's they aren't his lyrics, they aren't his songs, but at the same time, you know. I think we talked about it and he said you know as long as he can throw himself emotionally into the lyrics uh, which he says he's now able to you know I think that's what's really important you know because if he can invest his his feelings and like his spirit into the songs I think it'll come through a lot better I would imagine for Jesse he was pretty nervous um, there was still some talk about you know why he left before some uh some understandings here and there that they needed to be laid out. Um, but I think at that point, he had already explained himself enough. He sat down, he started explaining again. We just said, it's, it's cool, man. We get it. We understand. You, you've explained it away. Uh, we're ready to start rocking with you. Let's just see how this is going to work out. <laughs> to work no matter what uh we're very excited to be doing this again and uh with jesse at the helm it's it's invigorating um feels fresh and after 10 years fresh is a totally bizarre feeling to feel it's pretty easy to get stale and uh and your job turn into an old hat type situation and uh now it feels like a brand new thing jesse's a guy who's uh very passionate, you know, passionate about his, um, what he does. He really believes in, I think, music, and I think that's what makes him a great writer. He really means what he's saying. You know, there's a lot of people out there who write songs, like, hey, what's that song about? Well, I don't really know. And, and uh, Chessie's the type of guy who will tell you what, he, what he's going to write a song about before he even writes it. It's kind of an inspiring dude to be around sometimes because it's his passion, his creativity, you know. You know, as far as recording records, I've had the pleasure of working with musicians who have recorded material done. Most of the bands that I've been in over the past six, seven years have been bands that I had to travel to, bands that are three or four hours away from me. So through the power of email and recording, they'll do all the pre-pro and record these tracks and send them to me. And over the years, I've had a balance of just like free writing on my own or listening to the songs and seeing like just writing down key words that I'm hit with. And that's what I did with this record. My writing inspiration is a mixed bag. It's definitely from stuff that happens in my life. Uh, more often than not, it's stuff that I observe, especially living just outside of New York City. I spend a lot of time down there, and I'll often go down to the city and you know sit in a certain part of Central Park and, and watch people interact, watch children play, you know, watch homeless people pick the trash, you know, I'll go for long walks out in the woods here and just sit and be still and hear only the wind and the birds. That will trigger another part of my brain that I'll write about. But more often than not, sometimes those writings will translate themselves into other things. I'll see something about world events and somehow world events in my personal life just kind of meld together. So I try to write songs on multi-dimensions, where if you're a listener and you're reading my lyrics, you can interpret it one way, and someone else can interpret it a completely different way. And I think it's important to write songs like that, because people's personal interpretations of what lyrics are are often stronger than the writer's intent. You know, it may sound direct, but in actuality, it may be three or four subjects just kind of melded into one. It's a lot. 
better by the time. Um, you might have got a good I think, honestly, Jesse's just stoked to be uh, a professional musician again. You know, he's been kind of back and forth with so many things in his life. You know, he never really was able to really, you know, have one of his other bands take off and spend full, you know, be a full-time musician before. And now that he's given that opportunity, he's just so stoked and so grateful, you know, like, like we all are. You know, like, I know for a fact that, you know, I personally am really really happy that I'm, I'm able to do this for a living you know producing and you know being a touring musician a writing musician what have I done done <laughs> done what have I done what have I done to bring this down to me they did the same thing as Bill no shot at them separates Jesse as a person and a singer is uh, basically just you know he's that dude that you know writes what he feels you know just passionate about every every single word that comes out you know every uh, every belief everything he's saying every word that comes out of his mouth just uh, it's uh, it's cool to see a lot of people don't have that and you know he definitely does It's nice to have somebody like within the band that's capable to do you know what Adam does because um, sometimes I think outside producers try to make a band to you know what their vision of the band is maybe but with Adam I just think he knows what the band should sound like and what we all want to sound like and I feel like everybody gets maybe a little bit more say because it's because it's him doing it. It's not possible to care about the music you're producing more than Adam does. Whatever that ceiling is, Adam is through the ceiling as far as the work that he'll do and how much he dedicates himself to making the record sound as good as possible. He's always thinking about the record, he's always um, thinking about how to make things better. He just has his little his little moment where he just sort of is off rubbing his sideburns thinking about things and you know you know he's really he's really into it. The last record was uh, a lot different for me of course because I was uh, not the uh, the guy in charge but it was actually uh, really cool because I got to just hang out and kind of observe and kind of chill and be more of an artist instead of a producer. That was nice. Yeah, I kind of want that again. But at the same time, I, I do enjoy kind of being the, the guy putting all the ideas together and, you know, getting everybody to kind of think on the same page. That creative process that I just love being a part of. Working with Adam is, is easy for me because we have a lot of the same taste in music. Um, we enjoy simple things like drinking beers and hanging out by the fire and talking about life. It's just simple stuff. And then he's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my entire life. That just continues to make me laugh. And we're able to get stuff done, but also he has a way where he makes you laugh while correcting you. So it kind of takes the tension off. So when I'm really like frustrated and trying to nail a part, you know, he'll record my mistakes and play them back to me and like mess with them to make me laugh. <laughs> I constantly does this, constantly. You know, and uh, he's just really good at what he does. I, I come in like, uh, the analogy I use is like, kind of like the cartoon Tasmanian Devil. I just come in with these ideas and these emotions and want to belt them all out. And he sort of is able to steer me in the right direction and calm me down and get the performance out. So I think we work really well together because he works off of my weaknesses and helps me strengthen that stuff. He's uh, an amazing producer, and he's, he's proved it time and time again. Uh, every time I step into the studio, it's just like hanging out with the guy, just hanging out on his couch, and, and oh yeah, let's play guitar for a second. Oh yeah, let's get back to the conversation we just had about absolutely nothing, and uh, that's the best part about recording with Adam, is that uh, it doesn't seem like you're doing anything. <laughs> Adam's a character to work with, and he's a very honest, um, usually in a, in, a, in a funny way, so it's, <laughs> it doesn't make you feel too bad about yourself, but he's a, he's, he's a tough critic, which is good. That's uh, kind of, I think, something we all need. Um, but he really doesn't let anything slide, and it's, sometimes it's frustrating. You're like, oh, man, I, I suck, blah, blah, and then 
you watch him do his guitar tracks, he, he puts himself through the same thing. I used to be of a different mindset. I'm getting better at it because uh, whenever I'd have to work on a record, like my life would just stop. It's hard because you lose sight of like a lot of your friendships and relationships and whatnot and your social life. When it's time to go to bed, I'll see like waveforms, you know, in my head and like, you know, the computer screen is just kind of like fried into my eyeballs. You know, like I'll have dreams about audio. It sucks. I hate it. <laughs> I'd say the only big differences between you know the beginning of my career uh, to now is of course the uh, the expectation level. At the same time, there's also a lot of uh, I don't give a crap because I just don't. <laughs> I think it's uh, a lot of um, what I do and what most producers do is just you have to ignore all those outside uh, you know observations and all that and just always do what feels right. That's that's how good music's made. You know. You, you get in there, you do what's right for the part, you do what's right for the song, and you don't pay attention to what people are saying or thinking or any of that, you know. None of those pressures really matter as long as you just make the best music you possibly can. I'm hoping people can get that same feeling that I get when I listen to my favorite records. You know, like, uh, that's the best feeling ever. I mean, if I can do that for somebody else, like, I've done my job. It's the way I look at it. guys who really enjoy creating something and uh, the fact that everybody's really picky about it the fact they're all friends while we're doing it it's kind of a fun process and frustrating in some ways and that's what I love about this band um, the fact that you can kind of sit down with a group of guys and create something uh, and the fact that people have over the years you know heard it absorbed it and uh, kind of know the material it's one of those things that just makes you feel good and I, sometimes I think back like, wow man, I sat around with these guys and we, we made this and now we're in Japan and people know these songs and it just blows my mind still. It's kind of, it's a crazy thing. I'm super thankful for that. There's not a lot of bands that get opportunities like we do and it, it's an amazing feeling to be, uh, to be able to make another record again, period. I feel like we were given a chance to to get out there and play in front of a lot of people and it happened to work. We won the so-called lottery of bands for some reason and uh, we need to ride the wave as long as it goes. Ever since I was a little kid, my father would play Beatles records or um, Neil Young was a big one, Bob, Simon and Garfunkel, and it's the old rock and roll stuff, Almond Brothers. And I there's actually pictures of me in my little rocking chair with those old school 70s bucket headphones on with a long extension cord going to the record player. And they would rock me to sleep by playing old gospel music or folk music or rock and roll. I think it's just kind of in my blood. What have I done to... Oh! <laughs> When I was a kid, I didn't even think I was going to play guitar, let alone, you know, be producing records and touring the world and all that stuff. <clears throat> if I weren't a musician, I'd probably be a meteorologist because I also love weather. Yeah, I do. Um, I love the outdoors. I love the earth. 
but uh, I also love music a lot and um, you know it's a passion and it's I think uh, real music fans know I know that feeling you know it's just that feeling you get when you listen to one of your favorite songs or, you know just something that moves you like that you know believe in your bands but you never believe that they can do anything you never believe you can make money at it it's just something you, you really enjoy doing and that you believe in it's pretty awesome to be put in this position do we deserve it i don't know <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to go out there and meet these people and then go out and sing songs that they hold dear to their heart that i didn't write that i have to portray to them that it means something to me those are things that go through my head but I try not to psych myself out you know because I, I really feel like if you're a fan of Killswitch I'm doing the best I can to honor that tradition you know I helped start the band and I'm going to do everything I can to honor the tradition that Killswitch has started and reach out to those new fans and let them know you know I'm not here fronting on you I'm here doing the best I can to give this the passion and love that it was from the beginning we're just really happy we have a chance to be a band again and to you know just go out and, and play shows. It's so much fun to go out and play in front of kids that love your music. So we're all really lucky. So we've been missing that. I'm excited to go out and do it again. Sorry about that game part. It's too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs>